Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2024 Honda Ridgeline all-wheel drive in the Sport trim level. They have made a few changes here in the 2024 model, and I'm liking what I see so far. The name of this color is Sonic Gray Pearl, and the sun is shining a little bit, uh, so hopefully you can see what this color looks like. It's a really impressive looking color, especially on this vehicle and all the uh, contrast styling that the vehicle has. So here in the front grille, it kind of has a gloss, kind of grayish black grill that looks pretty cool. A little bit different than previous years. And then a matte black bumper. You see some airflow there on the sides, airflow there at the bottom. There's some that more of that gloss black at the bottom it has like a little sparkle to it. I don't know if you can see that the sun shining on it. It has the red sport badging here in the front. The Honda emblem also serves as the radar adaptive cruise control sensor. There's also a combination of LED projector headlights and then reflector. So there's halogen reflector for the high beams, LED projector for the low beams. And then the fog lights are LEDs and projectors. They're in a very low position, which is excellent. Looking at the profile of the vehicle, uh, it does have that matte black or flat black plastic here on the bottom, including underneath each door. And the doors go all the way to the bottom, and I'll show you why they do that in a few minutes. Uh, that black cladding goes around the back, all the way around to the back bumper. Uh, there's also gloss black here on the center pillar, uh, which kind of blends in with the glass, especially if you tint the front glass, it blends it all in. The side mirror is also a gloss black as well. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity key as a remote start, lock, unlock, panic button as well. There's a physical key on the inside, and it's a well-rounded, fairly somewhat lightweight key, so it's easy to carry around with you. And as long as you have the key with you, uh, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, wherever. As long as it's on the outside of the door, you can lock the door by pressing this button. You can unlock it by simply putting your hand behind the handle here, and it'll sense the key on the outside of the door and unlock the door and allow you access to the vehicle. There's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only. The doors go all the way to the bottom and that covers up this entire threshold area uh, to make it cleaner than would otherwise be. There's even a seal at the bottom of the door to kind of keep that area cleaner. The inside of the doors, very well designed. Um, it has this little shelf pocket here. It's very handy. Here, there's a larger pocket down here bottle holders here a little cup little uh, little cubby right there as well even the handle uh, isn't closed so you can utilize that as a as a little pocket as well uh, this is an injection molded soft touch material here here this is kind of like a vinyl type material and then the, the hard touch durable plastic is here at the very bottom there's also a reflector in the door as well uh, so really like the design because the right where you put the bottle is uh, it's very ergonomic. It's right where your hand would be. This little shelf comes in handy all the time. That's really good for a short umbrella or pretty much anything. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the space in the vehicle is well designed. Uh, manually adjusted cloth seat here on the passenger side. Has a little bit of a honeycomb pattern there on the center. Looking pretty good. And the Ridgeline seats are very comfortable. Uh, they've done a good job for years now. Then there's the... There's the floor mats, they hook in place. There's a lockable glove compartment. Pretty standard, smooth size, uh, smooth uh, inside. Uh, there's also this little accent. You saw this here on the door as well. It's like a little accent right here. Kind of like a little bit of a carbon fiber look, not really, but it looks pretty cool anyway. Then you have a non-reflective uh, kind of rubbery soft dash here as well. So there's plenty of room getting in and out of the front door. So the swing of the door is nice. The opening is wide up in space. Uh, the back door is a little bit smaller. It does have a good swing of the door though. It allows you to enter the vehicle a lot easier. Uh, the, the very first year model, the door didn't swing open that much and they correct that problem because it was a little bit better to have this, uh, more of a swing on the door. Now it has the soft touch here, but it has the hard touch here. So hard touch up here, and this is the only soft touch 
in the back door. Uh, but look, once again, we have very well thought out placeholders here, uh, places for your stuff. So you have a cup holder, place to put your phone or whatever, and then this is enclosed as a pocket. And uh, this is kind of unusable space because it's kind of goes right there next to that seat, which is a little bit higher than the front. So they just don't even bother putting anything right there that's gonna be hard to reach anyway. Uh, there is really good under seat storage. Look at that. Uh, so even with passenger sitting in the seat, you can utilize the space under here. Uh, so yeah, that's really good. And that's another thing about having the door swinging open a little bit so you can load cargo. And I'll show you how to move these seats up and you can actually use this as a cargo space um, in addition to passenger space. Cup holders here, and these are soft. Little storage area there, that flips up. And you can see it's basically a bench seat, so it's easy to just get in, scoot over, uh, get in place, and there's a pretty decent amount of room back here. Uh, there's also pockets on the back of both front seats. 12 volt power supply. There's also a vent there at the very bottom of, if you can see that. All right down here. Uh, but these seats are really uh, easy to move up. So this little handle right here, you just release it there. So when you release it, you lift up, it, and it locks in place up here. Uh, so now I have added to my cargo space uh, while maintaining passenger space on that side. I can lift the other side up and have a wide open space here. So if I need to put a big box or a big TV or whatever I want to put back here, I get, in, I get out of the store, it's raining, I don't want to put it in the back of the truck. Or if I just want it more secure, I can utilize this space for cargo uh, in addition to the bed. And I'll show you the trunk, which is, the, which is a game changer. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, it has a shark fin antenna right here at the very top, and it's body colored. And there's also a gloss black back here as well, kind of blending in with the rear glass. Now there's a solid rear gla glass here in the Sport. The third brake light is located here at the top of the cab. The tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bobs back here. The tailgate has the ridge line kind of embossed in here. It's looking pretty cool, very truck-like. Uh, there's also a dual exhaust tips back here. Once again, pretty truck light. And the towing hitch is right here. And it has the uh, connector there as well. It also tells you right here, right next to the towing hitch, uh, the trailer weight and all that stuff. So it's showing 5,000 pounds towing capacity. So I'm glad they just put it right there on a the label and you can, you don't have to like look it up in a manual or anything like that or online. So the way this tailgate works, if you're not familiar with the ridge line, there's two ways you open it. Uh, one is right here. So you can open it, you can swing it this way. You can also swing it down. You can see that there's a backup camera in a good location. It's not in the center, but still good location. You can also lower the tailgate like this, just like a traditional truck. Very usable space back here. Uh, so the wheel wells, between the wheel wells is a good four feet. So it's very easy to lay down uh, sheets of plywood, stack them up as high as you want. And then you have fixed tie down spaces here as well. They're next to the cab, as well as back here in the low and high position both the front and the back. These lights, these cargo lights are excellent. Uh, not only do they illuminate the bed, but they also illuminate the trunk. We'll get to that in a second. So getting to the trunk is a little bit easier going this way. So open this up. This gives you a little bit better access to the bed. You can walk up closer and you know reach the bed a lot better. There is a non-locking little compartment right here. Right there, you can see that. That's good for putting gloves or tie down straps, that kind of stuff right in there. All right, so this is a locking, uh, automatically locks with the vehicle, same thing with the tailgate. Uh, this releases, and it also has a physical key location here, but this is your trunk and man, is it perfect. It is so handy. This, make, this makes this vehicle so much better than other trucks uh, like this. Huge cargo space here and it stays completely dry. Uh, it's not like a, you know, space is gonna get wet or anything. It stays completely dry. And this one has the cargo mat. Nice. There's also dividers you can buy. There's a carpet mat. There's a drain plug here. Um, so yeah, you can, there's different accessories. So like in my ridge line, I had the uh, the carpet mat in here, but I really like this cargo. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like a hard plastic there. Um, 
but there's spare, spare tires in here as well with the jack and basically you unscrew it and you slide it out and it hooks right in here and then it's like a tray that you can access very easy to get the not only the spare tire but also your tools and everything uh, really well designed the place where it's put and all that stuff is just a just a great solution so you don't have to get a, a, an old dirty spare tire from underneath the vehicle this is a great uh, alternative to that so yeah i really like this uh this basically a trunk uh, but you see the lights when we lift this up these lights shine right in here at nighttime so you have two lights one on each side so not only does it illuminate the bed but also when you lift it up it sh shines here in the trunk which does a great job really like the design there's a locking fuel door and the fuel door is here on the driver's side it's capless you don't have to worry about a cap or anything uh, you just pump the gas and you're good to go just put the nozzle in there and if you need a, uh, it comes with a funnel in case you need to use a gas can. And the funnel, you can see right here, it shows, use the funnel. Um, but the funnel is in with the spare tire. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. And once again, the floor mat uh, hooks in place, keeps it in straight for you. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and a footrest there. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch right here in the very center. And you just reach in to the right, move it to the right, and lift up. Kind of heavy hood. Uh, but it does require a prop to hold it up. There's the prop there and it swings up. There's actually two locations right here Or if you want the hood higher, there's a lower uh, Place down here so you can hook it either place depending on how high you want the hood It's kind of windy today as you probably noticed um, So I don't I didn't put the hood all the way in the high position because it seems like the wind kind of catches it sometimes Okay, so It's pretty sealed up uh, it has a seal across the front of the hood right there and then the insulation on the underside of the hood then there's a seal on the back down here you can see it right there it's kind of hard to tell uh, but there's the seal um, so it's sealed in the front and the back for and this helps with airflow and noise that kind of thing there's also a plastic cover here uh, with some insulation on the underside as well and most everything is kind of covered up though not easy to see the battery is located here and there's the air filter insulation on the firewall back there and you can see the engine is a little bit low so that way it helps with the center of gravity and the position of the engine is this way so it's kind of positioned as a front wheel drive vehicle um, so it's not like a traditional uh, rear wheel drive where it has a orientation this way so this is the front of the engine that's the back of the engine and then the uh, transmission is located down here now it is a uh, 3.5 liter v6 vtec engine and it has variable cylinder cylinder management vcm in which it is able to disable uh, different cylinders like three at a time or so uh, to accommodate for different power and also save you fuel and it pumps out 280 horsepower and it's paired to a nine speed automatic transmission. And this is an all wheel drive vehicle. So uh, it does have the ability to seamlessly use the all wheel drive system when needed. Uh, it does have drive modes, but um, you know, basically it's an, it's an automatic all wheel drive system. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, it has the power windows here, one touch up and down here on the front. The back is uh, is regular. Door lock controls. Uh, you can disable the rear windows by pressing that, so you don't have kids playing around with them. There's the uh, fuel door release. But yeah, it's basically the same uh, design here on the door. And there's a manually adjusted seat. Um, now instead of just the regular tilt and forward and back, it also has a height adjustment for the driver seat. So it's a little bit different than a passenger. To the left of the steering column, uh, there is the lane departure warning system, forward collision warning system, uh, the trash control system, default is on, that's the off button. And then you have a, the cargo lights you can turn on, uh, eco mode, which will give you a little bit better fuel economy, cut back on your power a little bit though, and your climate control. Side mirrors are adjusted here, you just pick a side and just adjust it with that little pad right there. There's also a tilt and telescoping steering column. Uh, you lock in place here. I'm sitting in the driver's seat checking it out. I'm six feet tall and have the driver's seat all the way back 
and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. And um, so yeah, I've got lots of room here. And this is a vehicle that they hadn't really changed the actual size of the vehicle. And as a vehicle, I've driven lots and lots of miles in. So um, other than a little bit of a hump on the footrest, uh, it's a little bit, my feet are a little bit too big for this particular footrest sometimes. Uh, I mean, it's okay, but other than that, I mean, it's like perfect. I got a lot, lots of room. I can put the seat a little bit forward than all the way back. So even if you're a little bit over six feet tall, you shouldn't really have a problem. Uh, so the steering wheel is leather wrapped, looking really nice, stitched there on the inside. You can see the, the, the design of the buttons are a little bit different this year. And they look really nice. Uh, just, I like the simplicity of the white letters, black background, very simple, easy to see, easy to read, easy to find, easy to use. Uh, so here on the right side is the cruise control. And once you turn it on, set, resume, cancel, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's also lane keep assist. And then the uh, adaptive cruise control, you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Here on the left side is the volume for the radio, change to the tracks on the radio. Uh, you also have voice recognition. You can also use that button for answering phone calls as well in the touchscreen. And then you have this home button, this little scroll wheel. I'll show you that in a minute. It relates to the screen up here. Uh, there's paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel. This is good for downshifting, if, especially if you're like on a downward slope or whatever. And then there's the windshield wiper controls here on the right side. Turn signal on the left, but the turn signal stock also has the headlight switch. You have, you can toggle on or off uh, your daytime running lights and then you have parking and then the headlights here and then the fog lights are controlled here all right so this is the part part of the screen uh, part of the gauges is a screen and the and over here is an actual physical gauge uh, but then on this side is digital speedometer and this is all a, a digital screen right here so you can get additional information so if we push the little home button here on the steering wheel and then we can kind of scroll through and choose the information that we want, including no content. Uh, we can adjust the brightness of the screen here, uh, display settings as well. So if we want to have the speed and time, we can have the audio information, whatever the radio is doing. We can have whatever the phone, navigation, torque distribution. This is really nice. Uh, when it's time to change the oil, that kind of stuff. Tire pressure can be shown here when you're driving. And then if you just don't want no con any content whatsoever, you can just choose that. Uh, and this is also giving you the option to change to kilometers per hour here as well. Uh, but you can see it just gives you a nice needle look as if you have an actual um, you know, gauge to match the other one. So there's the uh, digital clock down here, tachometer, which you can make go away if you want. Uh, and then you have in the settings, and then you have the uh, digital speedometer, odometer, outside temperature, uh, fuel gauge, and then you have over here the physical uh, speedometer. So yeah, very, very useful and uh, well thought out and simple. Easy to read, easy to see, easy to use. Once again, Honda. All right, so there's the start button there. And then here is the screen. It has a screen protector over it right now but it has nice vivid colors looking good and uh, this is the home screen you do have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay um, and it's kinda like a cell phone where you can slide through and, and have different icons here there's also Bluetooth audio once we pair the phone we'll have access to that I'll go out of there and then it'll have different information and options that are appropriate for that uh, trip computer can be shown here USB is another way of playing audio as well. Then you have your different settings, general settings, vehicle settings. Uh, you can do system updates here as well. I like this uh, digital clock. Um, and there's different settings here. You can change the way it looks like. The different clock faces. Have the little robot there. You can also have adjust the date and time here. But yeah, I'm glad that they have little, because sometimes you've got to focus on the, the time, so having that popped up is really nice. Digital compass. So yeah, there's a lot of different things here on the screen, different settings you can set up. Once you get it set up for yourself, uh, you just set it up one time, basically, and unless you want to change something, then it's, it's ready to go. 
then you can see there's uh, quick shortcuts here at the very bottom then you can change your audio source here at any time it does have a physical volume knob some physical buttons here on the sides and change to the tracks so once again very easy to understand and use and then I like the way it has a fairly large digital clock there on the top right that stays there it doesn't move around on the screen four-way flashes are here then a climate control uh, very simple it's a tri-zone actually driver passenger and rear so it has a rear uh, separate controls here so the driver passenger temperatures you can go to the rear settings and adjust the temperature there fan speed back there as well you can also turn the rear off if you want you do have an automatic mode uh, where you want the air to blow all that kind of stuff recirculate the air front and rear defrosters and once again very simple easy to read you're not uh, going through menus and all that stuff it's right there in front of your face you can see the temperatures you can see the fan speed uh, everything's very logical there's a little storage cubby right in here um, and if it had the heated seats you'd have the controls here on the other trims and there's the USB ports has USB-C and USB-A and then the 12 volt power supply wireless charge pad here cup holders with the little arms they take up the slack which they didn't have in previous years <laughs> nice and then here's the shifter and if you're not familiar with this type of shifter uh, it's it may look weird or may look strange but once you get used to it it's actually I like it better because it gets out of the way there's no like big stick sticking up it's just completely out of the way you just press a button put it in drive press it again to go into sport mode put it back in drive if we want we can go in the neutral if we want to reverse you pull back here now we're in reverse and while we're in reverse let's check out the backup camera so you have the different views the best thing about this backup camera is this view right here for me is so useful it's stretched out and looks a little weird at first but if you actually see what you're looking at you're actually looking behind the vehicle but also both ways behind your vehicle uh, it's very very handy to be have to be able to see like completely a 90 degree angle this way and that way uh, from the center so it's 90 degrees that way 90 degrees that way so you can see if there's any cars coming when you're backing out of the parking space and it is very 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 handy now if you want a more linear view you can look at that you can see now you don't see it both ways now and then if you need the top down view to back up to a trailer you have that as well and once again quickly very simple controls here uh, that you can access all right and then we can go back and park so yeah, once you get used to this shifter, it's 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 preferable for any, for a lot of people anyway. Here's your different drive modes. When we press this, uh, you have normal snow, mud, and sand. It shows you here on the screen what you've selected. Um, but normal mode does a really good job in pretty much any scenario. But you know, if you know you're going to be in a very in a different you know terrain, you can select that uh, to turn off the stop start feature you can push this button default will be on okay so check out this this armrest really nice nice and big maybe big enough to share with the passenger it's up to you uh, it's the contrast stitching here looking really nice and then this lifts up and it's kind of spring loaded so it doesn't fall back down on you and then there's a large storage com compartment here a little place to put some pins and stuff so yeah this is fantastic this whole, this whole center console area is uh, very simple and easy to use. Very very well designed. It has a manual day and night mode for the rear of your mirror. Lights here. You turn on all the interior lights. Turn them all off or have them turn on with the door in the center position. When you turn on the, in, the headlights, this little light right here illuminates. And this gives you a little bit of ambient light here in the center of the vehicle, which comes in handy. It's kind of like an orange color. Then there's a place to put your uh, sunglasses or shades or whatever or safety glasses. It's got like a foam insert there. And you can see right here where on some vehicles they have the conversation mirror. It's still there, but uh, that place is there, but it's not a mirror. I guess you could probably buy one and stick it on there, I guess. The visors, uh, it's the same kind of same material as the headliner. It's like a gray cloth material. There's a mirror with no lights. The visor also extends out as well on a metal rod. Looking at the visibility there in the back, it's pretty much excellent, except for a little bit of pillar uh, blocking your view there. But overall, uh, driving this vehicle, I've never really had a problem with it. 
as far as visibility, especially considering you have such a really good camera system. You can put it in that really wide view and you can see behind you and uh, both ways and everything. So yeah, really good. So anyways, there you have it. Thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Honda here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.